So there is this one really interesting trick that you can do with Roblox's reflectance property. And it's the fact that you can actually extend the values below zero and above one. And they actually have different effects. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Also check out my Patreon page. But let's get into the video. And shout out to this guy, Bucket Joy, who actually informed me about this and left a comment of what I'm basically just going to overview in this video. But going back, so this is going to be very similar to the glass trick that I also made a video on and it's going to be down in the description. But unlike the glass trick, we don't really need the highlight instance. And basically how this effect is achieved is by changing the transparency property to anything above one. Since the slider only goes from 0 to 1, and you have to input the number manually. So I'm just going to duplicate the sphere, and you can see that it already has the reflectance set to 1. This is how it's going to look by default, and now this is with the reflectance property. You can see that this sphere is reflecting the skybox, and that's basically how the reflectance property works. But now, if I were to change the reflectance to for example 2, you can see that suddenly it's more well saturated. Even if I go to something like 3 and then keep increasing it, to maybe even like 100, you can see that the effect is becoming really trippy. And it's kind of similar to if you were to increase the image saturation in, for example, Photoshop. Except it has a little bit more gloom because of the lighting and the environment. And also this reflectance property doesn't work on every single one of the materials. It mostly works on plastic, then smooth plastic, as well as the glass. If I were to change this to anything else, you can see that it doesn't really have an effect. And also, because it's like I said kind of similar to the glass effect, I kind of need to show some information with the graphic settings. Where if I go to file, then studio settings, and then the rendering, you can see that my editor quality level is set to 21. For the glass effect to work, it needs to be set to at least 16, because on 15 it's well going to disappear. But with the reflectance, even if it's at the lowest quality level, it's still going to reflect the skybox. And same if I increase this property. And even if I'm on the client, if I decrease the graphics quality level in my settings to be the lowest, well the glass trick isn't going to work, but the reflectance property is. So unlike the glass trick, everyone is basically going to be able to, well, see this. But going back to studio. And like I said, you can also decrease the reflectance but it's not really going to do anything on a normal plastic material. But it's going to do something special on a different one. But Phil Cyrus also wanted to mess around with a different property, which is going to be the transparency. And normally if the reflectant is set to 1, and you increase the transparency property, you can see that this sphere is still going to reflect the skybox normally, but if I were to change this to 50, and then increase the transparency, you can see that it has a little bit of a different effect. And this case is more similar to if you were to change black and white values on the level slider in Photoshop. But you can see that it still looks pretty cool. Now another thing is that when this part's reflectance is set to 1, you can't really change its color. But if it's set to anything above 1, for example 2, if I try to change its color now, you can see that it actually works. And this is giving like a really nice chrome environment map. And the transparency is still going to work with the color, same if I increase the value of the reflectance property. But now, you can see that this is a little bit different, because again it's going to be more saturated. And while talking about 3P effects, now we have this. But it's actually really fun to just mess around with the values, and seeing what can be done with different colors. For example, the blue value is going to create whatever this is. And if I were to increase the reflectance property, now it's giving like this golden or even crimson feel to the sphere. And also if I were to change this to black, it's not really going to work properly. Because this is just going to catch the color of the skybox, but if the color is lighter it's of course going to have a bit of a different effect. And I think I just got an idea for a thumbnail. Okay, but there is still one more thing mentioned about the reflectance property, and it's the fact that it can have a negative value. If I set it to minus 10, I would need to actually change the material first. And this is not really going to be any material, it's going to be glass. And there isn't really anything happening here, and that's because this is exactly where the light from the sun is shining. So if I were to turn my camera like this, suddenly it's a little bit different. 
I'm going to actually decrease the value just to present how it actually works. So right now you have the normal glass material and you also have negative reflectance. But unlike the first case, if the reflectance is negative, the color, or the saturation rather, is going to affect the color in a way where it's actually inverted. And if I were to change the first example to, well, red, you can see that it's blue. But here if I change it to red, it's still going to be, well, red. So it's going to be inverted, basically relative to the reflectance property. If I were to change it to 100, you can see that it's again blue, but minus 100 is going to be fully red. And this is still giving like a really nice VFX. And I just also made a double sided because I want to see this effect from here, and it does look kind of interesting. So that's all of the reflectance examples, but now let's see how this effect is going to look on a different mesh. And I'm going to use this torus node that I basically just use with every single example, but anyways. So the material is just going to be smooth plastic, and let's change the reflectance property to 1. So this is how it's going to look by default, but now let's actually try to increase it. And again, it's going to have more contrast. And it does look pretty amazing on a mesh like this. And it reminds me of this effect of like having, for example, cables and seeing like lights go through them. So yeah, this is really cool. And now let's see the glass. But let's actually make it a little bit lighter. So again, this is mostly going to work on areas where the sunlight doesn't get to. But now let's make the property negative. And this is where we can mess around with the color. And this is giving it a pretty nice gradient. And I think I just made a, well, gold material by mistake. And you know what, let's actually get the teapot mesh too, and just remove the texture. So again, the material is going to be smooth plastic, and let's actually change the reflectance value. And set the reflectance to 5, or maybe 10. And now we have a chrome teapot with a very high contrast. And what about a negative value? And of course the glass material. It's well going to look like this. And again we can still mess around with the colors. I don't know why but the orange color on this reflectance streak is kind of satisfying to look at. But yeah, that is basically going to be everything for today, so again go check out my Patreon. I've recently posted a combo system of mine with the Axe model available for free members. So yeah, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you for watching, hope everyone has a nice day and see ya guys.